Okay, this formula, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, comes up in a couple of ways. Um, <clears throat> first of all, if you know three of these things, you can calculate the fourth, like everything that's a variable. Um, the one thing you need to be careful of if you need to use it is all are in joules or kilojoules. And the default for one of them is not the same as the default for the others. Like if you're to calculate it from, normally you're given delta S in, I believe it's joules per mole Kelvin, um, whereas heat is usually in kilojoules per mole. And so you need to make sure that those two are in both in joules or both in kilojoules before you plug them in. <clears throat> now, what this question allows us to do is it allows us to figure out, I'm going to write it again, how these things relate. This is a question that is loved on the AP exam. It lends itself well to multiple choice questions. Um, and here's what I mean by it. So this table is going to be everything for AP Chem. Delta H, that is not a delta, and delta S can vary in terms of their sign. Then as a result, we can calculate, or we can see how changing delta S and delta G affect, we can see how changing two affects the third. Okay. If the reaction is exothermic, and increases in disorder. Um, so a combustion reaction, uh, ammonia breaking into N2 and H2, those are both things that are um, having an increase in disorder. If it tends to be exothermic and have an increase in disorder, then in other words, if I plug in a negative number here and a positive number here, no matter what the value of temperature is, I'm always going to get a negative value. I will have a negative delta G at all temperatures. Since temperature is in Kelvin, there's no such thing as negative. What this means is no matter what the temperature, the forward reaction is favored at all temperatures. Okay, the next possibility is if they're both positive. If they're both positive values, if I have a positive number here and I'm subtracting off a positive number, I can get either a positive or a negative answer. The bigger T is, the more likely it is that I'm gonna get a negative value for delta G. So we get a negative delta G at high temperatures. What high is depends on the reaction. Over some, the reaction won't be favored. And then if I heat it up past a certain point, it will be favored. So the way that I say that is I say it's favored at high temps. Now, if I made both delta G and delta S negative, then if I have a negative value here and a negative value here, the only way I will get a negative answer is if this is a small value. Otherwise, I'd, when I'm subtracting a negative number, it's being added on. So when they're both positive, it's spontaneous at high temperatures. When they're both negative, it's favored at low temperatures. The other option that we haven't looked at is if uh, this one's positive and that one's negative. So go back and look at this value. If one of, if delta H is positive and I'm subtracting off a negative number, there is no possible way I can get delta G to be a positive value. I'm sorry, I can get delta G to be a negative value. So this reaction is favored at no temperatures. Conversely, the reverse reaction 
is favored. Here's an example from a prep book that gets after this topic. Which of the following is true when a pure substance in liquid phase freezes spontaneously? Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deal with the word spontaneously. <clears throat> if it's spontaneous, that means we have a negative delta G value. So I can rule out this one and I can rule out this one because those have positive delta G values. Now let's look at, at freezing. I'm gonna just use water because I can wrap my head around that. Regarding delta S, is this reaction increasing in disorder or decreasing in disorder? Solids are definitely more ordered than liquids. So it's gonna give us a negative delta S value. So now I can rule out C. Now we need to consider endothermic or exothermic. Think about freezing. If as this thing is getting colder and we're going from molecular, then when I get into the phase change part, I'm going from molecular motion to less molecular motion. It's losing energy. That energy has to go somewhere. So this would be exothermic because the energy, the energy is going to go to the surroundings. And so I'm going to have also a negative delta H. 